Welcome to Maniacs and Dominoobs, Booch here, and this is my first in a series where I will be commentating games on the Crystal Scar of Dominion. But Booch, you say with skepticism, this mode is for just goofing around and being a tard. And therein lies the misconception that Dominion has no meta or strategy to it. With these series of videos, I hope to enlighten those newer players as to the intricacies of Dominion while providing some entertaining footage for the masses. Now straight into the basics, you start with 1,375 gold and you're level 3! Holy crap, that's awesome! Let's fight some people! But wait, what the fuck is- is that revive? Yes, your eyes don't deceive you. Revive is in fact the spell of choice in Dominion, much similarly to Flash in Summoner's Rift. The ability to immediately defend or siege a point again just after death is invaluable compared to the minor movement gains one might gain from Flash, although still a viable second option as are many other spells. So my perspective on this match will be from bottom. When most people think of Dominion, they think of these flashy 4v4 clusterfuck teamfights at the windmill, and while yes, those happen, a whole, almost separate game of 1v1 battling commences between a wide range of different champs and styles in bottom. From your typical Summoner's Rift top lane bruisers and mages, to strong lane pushers, tanky immovable bricks, and even the occasional marksman. Now, much similarly to Summoner's Rift, there are occasional roles that people kind of fit themselves in outside of the just generic 4 top and 1 bot situation. The combination of the 4 top can have a wide range of what is composed up there, but smart teams will diversify their range, damage types, CC, and initiation capabilities. So starting off, I simply capture the point. That's all you gotta do when you're bottom, is capture the point and push your lane and try not to die. Killing the opponent is obviously a bonus, and getting into skirmishes very early is very common. The V tries to escape me, but with a quick pull and a little bit extra damage, I end up winning in the trade. She burns her ignite on me, but I smartly wait outside the health relic, and then move in and use a health pot as soon as it's over. Now, I can safely re-engage, knowing that her ignite is down, mine's available, and now I can easily juke into the brushes and get the easy kill. Now with her dead, I can just safely push out the lane, try and shove it into her tower and deny her experience in gold. But what is this? The V used revive, and now I can no longer push this lane. Holy crap, she might kill me. Okay, she backed up. Now she wasn't rewarded with much, but sometimes it is necessary to revive early in order to keep pace with the enemy bot. As I am now up a kill worth of gold, she cannot afford to let all those tasty minions get eaten up by her greedy tower. Not the worst revive. Now upon respawning, a very smart thing to do is to run through your bridge of shade. Outside of each spawn point, there is that little tiny shade that connects your spawn point to the jungle area. Running from spawn to there, then to the health relics and move shrines, gives you a much needed advantage. As a slow, kind of brick bruiser like Darius, I can easily reach the V and do a lot of harassment before she can even suspect me of coming. With a, only boots one, I can engage on her quite freely. I use my spinning axe to clear out the minions of this portion, just to make sure it doesn't push into me and I don't miss out on any of that good, tasty gold and experience. Now, still pushing the wave, knowing that V has some okay AoE damage, she can still farm this pretty easily, but if I can engage upon her and deny her the ability to farm, and use my Dunkaru of Justice, everything will be quite alright. Now with the knowledge of knowing that she is dead, and that the people up top are still occupied with fighting, I have the opportunity to capture her bottom lane with no contestion whatsoever. Now here, I have two options. I can wait and defend this point, which I am very far away from home and my team, or recall. Purchase to be stronger, and return to my lane as normal, knowing I created a small advantage for my team in making the 3-2 cap while stifling the bleed on our nexus. Speaking of which, for the Dama noobs out there, Dominion is somewhat unique in its capture point system, and that only the team with the least control points has their nexus health drained over time. So if the amount of nodes are equal, or you are ahead, your nexus is sitting pretty. Also, the two other ways of draining nexus health is through kills, 
a mere 2 health points per kill, but will only do so up to your opponent's nexus health, reaching 125. And lastly, you can drain it with capturing the quest node, which appears sporadically throughout the matches at two adjacent nodes. Winning this will grant 20 nexus damage and a team-wide buff of 10% damage. Now getting into a little bit more detail about the build and how I play the game, you have to be very adaptive in Dominion. Yes, you can have a starting build that you like to try and go for mostly, but since, like I said earlier, what you could be facing could be widely diverse, and since there is no actual ranked or common draft mode, you have to rely on blind, not necessarily luck, but strategy. You cannot pick a very narrow champion and expect your very narrow build to work in a game where you have no idea what your opponents could be doing. So if you are facing a Teemo, or a lot of magic damage, you need to be able to itemize thusly. If you're facing a lot of assassins with physical carries, you need to be able to itemize thusly. So you cannot pigeonhole yourself. I, this game, was able to rush a Tiamat with my incredibly good start, and with a couple of awesome dunk gadoos, we can keep it going. And now, again, still knowing her revive is down from the very early revive, I can now get success on the nexus turret of stupid things you say. I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying anymore. Anyways, Twitch is able to recall and come back in time to try and stop the point. You can stop the point through capping the point while another person is attempting to cap it, only in a neutral state. The Twitch, for some reason, still thinks he can hang around with me. But I'm Darius Dog, and you bleed to death like a little bitch singing the song of justice. And uh, yeah, this V's dumb. I don't know. At this point, it's like she's like typing things to her enemies and dying. I don't know. I just whatever, man. I'll I'll dunk everyone forever. Now again, this is another situation where I could have been suicidal and then pushed up to their mid because another thing to remember when you're playing Dominion is that unlike Summoner's Rift where it's three lanes all pushing in opposition of each other, you have Dominion where it's a circle. Now owning a point just creates pressure outwardly from that point in a circle. So if you start controlling your enemy's side of the territory, you can still keep sweeping up from their bottom side up to their mid creating a lot of good pressure, and at that point, they either have to deal with you pushing their lane and taking their next mid, or go back and save themselves from their bottom lane already capped. Evelyn, right there, just decided to walk into me. I saw her capping the point, I decided to stick around, knowing that Evelyn's really good on the jump, not so much on the defense. V comes back, silly her, with her big old dumb fists of dumb bitchitude, thinks she can fuck with me, but bitch, I got the dunkadoos! Can't handle this. This this game can't even handle me right now. Can't, can't, can't even talk. Can't even talk. Look at she, she can't even talk. Now here, I could have went for the cap, but I was unaware of where the enemy team was at that point. I know I had just killed two people, but respawn timers are very finicky in Dominion, and people could surprise you at any moment. Alright, so now I'm returning to lane with all my swag of ever, and uh, again, using the Shadow Bridge, I can choose to go up to the speed train, but seeing Evelyn pushing my lane, I just decided to come down and meet her head on. With now my Hydra and Darius' spinning axe, I have so much AoE damage, I can both fight her and clear an entire minion wave at the same time. This little bitch better understand what's going on. Now, she just retreated into the jungle. Evelyn is extraordinarily dangerous in Dominion because not only is there so much hidden jungle, but even if she's in lane, normally the bane of people's existence, because then that's when they actually know where you are, Evelyn can sweep and gank people through lanes. So it's a very scary premise, so I try and tell my team that Eve is missing. V, the dumb bitch that she is, starts running back towards me instead of diving onto the Ziggs and trying to get something for her after. Evelyn does finally return to us, but this little hookah ain't got shit on me. I miss my spinning axe because I'm terrible at League of Legends, and Kogma comes in and misses three of his spells. That's alright. We push the lane more, Kogma keeps pressing on her, misses more ultimates. But that's alright, we're getting the tower. Just kidding, 
Twitch is killing me. I ignite and put a bunch of bleeds on him. Try to dunk him, but the midair dunko die. No bueno. It's alright though. It's a big shutdown onto me, but we've created so much pressure, we're five capping them. That's more than enough we could ask for. At this point in time, the game is practically over. Now, even though we are extremely ahead, you still have to remember that in Dominion, the game is technically never over. From what I said earlier, and how the capping of points works, your Nexus is completely safe if you are ahead on nodes. So, if the enemies were to be at one Nexus health, and then even the amount of nodes, it becomes anyone's game at that point, as long as the enemies never concede the node advantage. Now going into my silly build a little bit, uh, with the new change to Phage, there's a great influx of bruisers and ADCs in both Dominion and Summoner's Rift purchasing this item. Now you have the capability of chasing people down very efficiently, instead of the random chance that there once was on Phage. So, building into Trinity Force is really good. Oh, this stupid little... I'm just gonna... Ah, leave you for town. I don't really care about you. I'm, I'm, I'm huge. I don't need you. I'm better than that. I don't need to do that. Here I'm really stupid. So instead of chasing the invisible Twitch, I chase the uncatchable Cassidy as I miss my hook because I'm awful at League of Legends. I don't even know why I play this game. Cassidy's OP, so he just keeps rift walking away because that's all you have to do as long as you don't hard engage on him. But, to be fair, we push them really far back. So, we keep pressing on. So, the Talon, pulling in the Twitch, he jumps to the Kassadin again, who, for some reason, doesn't know how to play Kassadin, I guess. Kogma, in the meantime, was keeping the point busy, making sure it gets captured. Lux is a slut in base who AFK camps and snipes the node, but, hey, there's two other people capping it, so that doesn't even matter. Now, if you remember what I said earlier about Dominion being a circle, here's my opportunity to again push in that circle. We captured their midpoint, so with the minion wave that it spawns to the contested bottom, I can now just walk down there, pushing the lane, and start capping their point again. Granted, they have successfully taken our bottom, that's what Dominion's so great. If you are winning, you can create the pressure wherever you want. Stupid Twitch, why are you spraying praying? Come on, dog. Now this is a smart thing I try and do. Twitch is ranged. I'm a melee bruiser. If I stay in the shade, he has to come to me. I don't have to go to him, that's just silly. I don't need to take his point, because we're still up three to two. So I can just wait, let him be stupid, and give him the dunk And now that he's dead, just take his point, because, well, GG. And Kassadin shows up to stop me, which, to be fair, is a fine idea. V comes to, and both these double dick donger duders just double team me to death, deliciously dining on dicks. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm good with alliteration. Whatever. <laughs> they least it comes, stops them from doing more stuff, and it's fine. We're gonna win this game. They're so low on Nexus health. Our team is extremely strong, especially me. All we have to do now is hold bottom for a little bit longer, hope that top can sustain itself for just a couple more seconds, and this game is over and done. And with that, folks, we will be winning the game, and that will conclude our first adventure together through the Crystal Scar. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You can also follow me on stream at twitch.tv slash If you have any questions or thoughts, please leave a comment down below. I'm Booch, and I'll see you when I see you.